Okay, well, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we were sad that you couldn't be here with us tonight. We had Sobe drinks, and uh, they were non-alcoholic, don't worry. Uh, we got pina colada, strawberry daiquiri, all the good stuff. But uh, we want to welcome you in. Thanks for watching. Uh, today we're going to have a little tutorial on our new gospel project, and I'm very, very excited about this. After watching the curriculum and going through it, uh, it is going to be a power-packed item for our students and uh, our children. So they're going to love it and they're going to grow uh, very quickly. And I think that you will find that it will be easier for you to go prepared into a Sunday morning where you feel fully equipped, ready to go, and there's going to be many tools to help you with that. So uh, Alice has been so gracious enough to go through the elementary portion. And so she's going to do a sample lesson for us of what a Sunday morning might look like at Anchor Church using this equipment. We are using... A Sunday morning might look like at Anchor Church using this equipment. Your speaker, it's easy to set up. Our setup team will take care of that. If you'd like to learn how to set this equipment up, we can teach you. Uh, but we'll have a speaker and the volume with kids. We want it loud, but not loud. We want it loud enough so that they can hear and participate, but not too loud. Children's ears are very sensitive. Uh, so we'll just have to monitor that with this handy dandy little remote right here. Uh, we'll also be projecting onto a screen and we have a television that we'll be using, uh, much like the monitor that you see on the TV here. And so uh, Alice is going to kind of walk us through this. If you have questions, feel free and contact me at 319-0823 and I can set you up with Alice uh, who might have better answers than I would uh, or I can try and answer those questions for you. Uh, you know, to the best of my ability. So without further ado, uh, let's pray together and then we'll let Alice take us through that sample lesson. Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for this opportunity to uh, learn how to uh, teach our kids from little children all the way up to young kids that are about 11 years old. Uh, it's exciting to see that they're going to have a tool that they're going to really be uh, pumped about and that they're going to learn a lot about you. So Lord, I pray that you would teach us right now. Lord, we'd have clarity on how to use this new gospel project curriculum. And God, that you'd be honored through all of our actions as we do this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I'm so glad we're all here today and that we want to serve God in this way and um, honor him by working with the little kids in our class, in our, in our church. Um, like Jared said, what we have adopted now, because they quit making the teach, Bible teaching for kids, we are now using the Bible Project, uh, the Gospel Project, which is not new, but it is fairly new. They quit making the one that we were using, and this one is going to be our new curriculum. So what comes with it uh, is... Uh, books for the kids that have, uh, this one is Younger Kids Activities book, and it's puzzles with yeah, color pages that go with the uh, lesson that was uh, taught, taught to them. So it's like one per week? One per week, one page per week, front and back. And so for the elementary at this point, we have the Younger Kids and the Older Kids Activity books and you can give to the younger kids the more appropriate book and give to the older kids the more appropriate book and they can work on them simultaneously. So that's how those will work. They also, each child will receive a pack of like um, trading cards. They're really cool. They have the picture of the story that, or the lesson that we're giving it that week and you give them the whole packet for the the fall session in the beginning. That's the whole packet. And we've ordered those. Those are coming in, and we will be giving those to the kids that first lesson. So we give all of them to them one time, or do we just give one per week like that goes with the lesson? So I don't think they'd lose them. <laughs> well, you would think so, but I don't know. It's recommended you give all of them, but we can do it either way. Yeah. Want to take a vote? I think we can give them their packet, yeah. but like they only get to take one card home. Yeah. Like, I think for at least the preschool, that's what we'll do. Yeah. Okay. Because I think that... Or they might not bring them the time. next week or yeah. something like well, that. Well, you know, they don't need to have them on the back. Oh, they don't? No. No. This is for them to just have at home. This explains the gospel project to the parents, and then this will explain um, the big picture question 
that we have each week. For so the really kids. it's a tool for the parents. It's a tool for the parents. And it's a fun card for the kids to and get excited about. It tells how each lesson we give, Old Testament or New Testament, points to Christ. It's all, everything in the Gospel Project points to Christ at the end and shows how it's all related and, and the thread of Christ is throughout the Bible. So um, these cards are good for, for the parents. It says the big, the big quip, uh, the big picture question for kids the first week is who created everything? And um, then it gives the answer and then it gives the Christ connection. So they have the trading cards so you can decide as a, a grade level what you would like or is most appropriate for you to do. What I have done for each level is printed out a letter explaining to parents what the gospel project is in a very brief way and I made these little folders you can put the child's name on it put their card or cards in it along with this letter and that way they might have some way of keeping it at home <laughs> but anyway so there's something and then you will see at the end of every uh, lesson the very last thing that the kids will do is keep a journal they're trying to show children and get them in the practice of keeping a Bible journal and a study journal of their, their learning of the Bible. And so what I have done is put a packet together for them. This is, uh, every page has the lesson for, the first lesson is this one, so you would circle that. And preschool and early elementary might just draw pictures or even the upper elementary might just draw pictures and then write a little something, but anything that helps them to remember what the lesson was about. Then the next day they would go, or the next Sunday, they go to the next page, they put this one over here on this side. Then they go to the next page and you circle the second lesson and they do the same thing and they put it over here. So you keep these at church when you finish uh, it, depending on your grade level again when you finish you can send the papers home and keep the packet for the next uh, session <clears throat> okay um, the kit comes with a, a CD so you can play the music that the kids will be singing at worship time as they're coming in and doing the beginning activities it comes with uh, an older kid's guide and a younger kid's guide for elementary. And then the preschool has their guide. And what the elementary will be doing is kind of intermingling the activities that are appropriate for the kids they know they have in their group and what works with those children. So you can use those two books to put together the one lesson. So what I'd like for us to do now is talk about the main structure of the Sunday school as it goes. And so the kids come in and it starts out with a small group and it's gathering and introduction time. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Then they go to a large group where I think at the point where our church is now we will just have children move and you move with them just so they have a uh, movement in there they need to move kids don't just sit as you well know um, so we'll move to another area do the large group activity and then when we're done with that we'll move back and do 30 minutes of a small group activity and um, let's see. so let's talk about that first small group as they're entering into your room um, you have 15 minutes approximately uh, so what you will do is greet the kids, make sure you have eye contact with them, talk to them about their week. Maybe they're in softball or, or t-ball or something and make sure you remember those things about them. We care for them deeply and we want them to know that Christ does too. And so next week you can ask them about it. Ask them about their new brother or sister that's coming or you know, I mean, there's a myriad of things you can talk to them about at that time. Make sure there's a personal touch there. Um, let's see. Then uh, you will start on the activities page, which is in this activities booklet, and you'll do the first side of the activities page. 
And um, it can also be used for take home if you find you don't have enough time to do the activities page, but I think you probably will. Um, and then the third part of the small group is the session starter, and there are two choices that you can choose from for, for the session starter. In our old program, it was called the warm-up. And what we do here is um, there is a low prep session starter, and then there's one that just takes very little preparation. Um, there is not as much preparation of materials or gathering of things that in this program that we had in the other program. So I know a lot of you are going to be happy to hear that. Um, so once you get those choices done, you're going to start, we will start the video that is the countdown video. And we were doing it before you guys came into the room and you sat down just as it was ending. So you have your countdown video. And if you'll look at the screen right here, it's right here. And I'll just click it real quick. And you can just take a couple seconds to look at it. And it gives you three minutes to get the kids wrapped up with their activity pages and up and over into the large group. So there's two minutes, 45 seconds, two minutes, 44 seconds, two minutes, 43 seconds. You can count it down for them if you like. So that's what it sounds like. There's music and everything. So if you can run a DVD player, yes. you can run this curriculum mm -hmm. for the church service, which is really yes. exciting. And if you can't run a DVD player, we'll find I'm someone who can help you do it. Yeah, <laughs> your assistant teacher can. Some, some sixth grader will be glad to help you with that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you do the countdown video. And you get the kids transitioned from their small group activity and welcome activities into the large group. Um, there is, for the elementary, a timeline that shows pictures of the, the gospel project. We're going through the entire Bible in three years, and every lesson points back to Christ. As I said, it has the thread of Christ in every lesson. So this is very exciting for me. I love that idea. And um, let's see, uh, the timeline, you'll talk to show them where it is, you'll talk about it to the elementary kids. They have the same timeline for the preschool. It's just, I think, very abstract for their little minds to grasp. So I don't think it's an appropriate thing. We did not get one for them. But if you want one, we can do that. <laughs> so. I think it's too much for them. <laughs> yeah. Anything to yeah. <laughs> so, um, there is a lesson, you'll see in the lesson just in just a minute how to do that. Um, and then uh, the big picture question is not this. Here it is. We're getting posters that were supposed to come in today. They haven't, but they will come in before we start, which will be September 8th. After Labor Day, I'm going to be making phone calls and getting kids back to church that haven't been there for a while that I know still want to come because I've seen them outside of church and they keep talking about it. Uh, the big picture question for everyone, preschool, elementary, and everyone, is who made everything? And the big question answer is God made everything. <laughs> and that's really the preschool one. For elementary, the answer is a little more uh, intricate. And then, um, so you talk about that, and it tells you in your booklets how to do that. <coughs> I have for every teacher an example of the first lesson in a purple folder for you that is um, outlined, and it gives tips for large group, tips for small group, and it really gets into the intricacies of everything. So you'll be able to see that. Do you have an elementary for Angela? A what? An elementary one? Yes, we do. I would love it. And so, um, uh, we are going to learn systematic truths about God in each session uh, through a variety of methods and so forth. And then we talk about the big picture question. And then the Gospel Project for key, the Key Passage, 
and, which is on one of the posters that's coming. You'll have a, a poster that you can refer to, is the passage that we're covering for that week. And then the Bible story. So after um, we look at the key passage and the, the key question, then we go into the Bible story. It says in the book that you'll be receiving, uh, there you go. You can just push the up arrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And these are just a copy of those books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you can either tell the Bible story yourself or do the DVD. In the very beginning, nothing existed. So we'll do a couple of minutes of it so you get a gist of it. And created the heavens and the earth. When he first created the earth, it had no shape. The total darkness covered the earth. The Spirit of God was present, covering all the lives. God said, let there be light. And light was created. God separated the light from the dark. The light was called day, and the darkness was called night. God saw the light, and he knew that it was good. This all happened on the first day of creation. God began to separate the waters that were on the surface of the earth with the waters that were above the earth. God created a great expanse between the water on the earth and the water that was above the earth. He called this expanse the sky. This all happened on the second day of creation. Then God created dry land on the earth. The waters were gathered. So it goes through the seven days of creation. And in the preschool booklet, there are a lot of movement activities for the kids to be doing to understand the seven days of creation and the, the concepts behind all of this are movement centered for the preschool and there's a lot of activities for the elementary that help them to get it too. So after that, after you do the DVD for telling the, the Bible story, um, you're going to have music. Now in the book, they've got these things a little out of order and it makes more sense to me to do it this way. You have the key passage, the Bible story, do the praise music, prayer, and then start the discussion this video. And one of the things that we'll have is on Planning Center, uh, where you guys receive the invites, you can go and you can look at the order of service, and we'll have that listed out. So exactly what Alice is describing, we'll have the order that we desire for you guys to teach the curriculum on. So even here it says Bible study, discussion, songs, countdown. That's not the order we'll want. You'll follow the Planning Center and the guide that Alice is discussing. Yes. And you have a little book that tells you everything. It tells you every word to say. And <laughs> that's like a normal teacher's guide, but we all know we embellish and we give our own personal stories and that and help make it more of a personal thing for the kids. So then comes the music. So we are going to move to songs. That's not doing it. Together from the place, the dry it's okay. on the computer and press it up. There you go. Here. The dry land was called. Press the arrow and then click on it. Okay. Now this is for unit one. In this um, next fall semester, we have unit one. We have these songs here. And then we have unit two and unit three that have their own songs. The songs that are sung are directly related to the concepts that are being taught. Uh, the, in Unit 1 for Elementary, you, you are going to sing these first two songs, You Are God Alone and In His Own Image. And this will help the kids, too, to get into a worship and understand how music relates to the, the uh, messages being taught. Music is a very important element for children in their learning, and um, I think you probably remember that with your childhood. So what do you do if you're not comfortable singing? 
You don't have to. So you got to speak louder. If you're not comfortable singing, then you, you just play the you video. Play, play the video, and it sings for you. And all you have to do is act excited about singing. <laughs> and they go with you. Don't take over the singing. <laughs> yeah, I get worried. You can even. You can stand up front if you feel more comfortable doing that, or you can stand with them in the audience because they're going to have their attention on the screen. By human hands, you are not God dependent on any mortal man. Okay, so after you get through with that song, you'll go to this song in his own image. And you can, yeah, do that. You can tell them to clap. Or you, you hold hands and go in a circle or go yeah. together and go out or do a step. They're more movement centered, so yeah. What were you gonna say there, Kelly? Nothing. <laughs> I'm just saying like it'd be into can't we just like play them or is it like when we're having the the free time like doing on their worksheets, can we play those songs too? You have it on a CD. Oh okay. so you can play those songs while they're doing that too. This okay. is the, the group worship time. And with preschool, you may want to do a movement thing. So you, you can, I can help you with that, or if you know how to do that with kids, but keep to keep them focused in on the music. Like that's another question. Are we take and meeting in one room and doing large group? You keep saying small group, large group. I guess I don't understand. Like. Okay, that's what they call it. But what you're doing is you're the teacher. Okay. Because we're so small at this point. Okay, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I but know. later <laughs> on, <laughs> later on, when we're huge, we're, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna we have a leech in like a, a central area with mm -hmm. like, because aren't we split now with like our younger elementary school and our older elementary school, or we're not? We'll, we're, we're not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking it will be soon though, because we've got a lot of kids enough for both groups to be able to mm -hmm. do that. Um, so right now, though, with the small group that we have, what I'm doing is small group with them over here at the tables, then we'll move to the pit area and do the large group activities, then we'll move over here and do the small group activities again, yeah. and um, just so there's movement in their day. So everything right now is a small group, Okay. But what they call large group is we're all participating, and you know, if you have two teachers in your classroom, and you know, say you've got three, four, and fives, mm -hmm. and you want to take the threes and fours, and one teacher takes them to do the small group activity, and then the other teacher takes the five-year-olds to do the small group activity. Yeah. Uh, or you take all of the kids to another section. So it's just ways of dividing it up to give the uh, kids different sections. I mean, I know you, yeah. you guys understand that, but there's just a different, couple different ways to do it. And as we grow and get bigger, we'll be able to split and, yeah. and really do that when we have multiple teachers there. It's like at times with younger kids, you give them a little mat to sit on so they're not bothering each other. They have their little boundary. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now they know, okay, now we're doing this activity, small group activity. Now we move here, we're doing a different activity. We're going to be doing this. So, okay, after the music and you do your praise, lead the children in prayer. And one of the main points um, with the Gospel Project is to teach children that they can talk to God and that they can listen to Him and that they can bring anything before Him. And But you will lead them in prayer and then you'll send, uh, start the discussion video which will transition them, get them ready to go back to another small group activity. So we've led them in prayer. Oh, gotta go to the First lesson, God created the world and people. And we'll go to the discussion starter. And I think you need to watch this. This is so funny. This is a good one. Hey, Sprinkles. I got a 
question for you. Good, because I got an answer for you. Okay, where do you think we came from? Oh, 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 I know, Frosty. Aliens beamed us in there. They're from the planet the refrigerator. <laughs> no way, Cherry. That's ridiculous. Everyone knows we all started out just as crumbs in the bottom of the oven, then slowly we turned into cookies, and from cookies we became brownies, and then from brownies we became cupcakes. Filled with sweetness and goodness. Seriously? It's a theory. I don't know. I heard the muffins talking about the baker. The muffins said we were formed by the baker, who made us from scratch and designed each of us with unique toppings for a special purpose. And what purpose is that? To be eaten. <laughs> <laughs> After that, you take your kids back and you do these small group activities where you reinforce everything that has just been presented to them. Uh, reinforce it, restate it, restate it in a different way, restate it again. <laughs> because we know that it, repetition is the, the key to learning. Um, so as they're going through their activities, and you have a choice of the activities you'll see in your book, a choice of activities that you can do with the kids. Um, just be verbalizing with them about what the concept is that we are addressing that day. Um, let's see. You'll, you'll have activity uh, choices, one or two. You can do one of them or you can do both of them depending on how fast your kids work through things or their attention span is. They may need to be doing two different things. Um, then you'll have a Bible skills section that you will see in your booklet. And uh, then the coloring page, which is in the, I think I showed it to you earlier, in the uh, activity page. This is the big picture poster, and they can color their own. And then, after that, we are trying to teach kids to journal about the Bible. So at the very end, they will be doing their journal. And I explained this earlier. You circle the, the concept that we were working on that day. They take the page out. They draw a picture or they write something. And then they put it in this side. And they're ready for the next week's lesson over here. You circle that one next week. And they do the same thing. And then you send them home at the end of those five lessons. And you keep the folder so that uh, you can put the next group of papers in there. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So it was at the end. Sorry, That's I stepped it. away for crying, Natalie. Uh, so let's just do a quick recap and correct me if I'm missing something. Okay. Uh, I'm an observer just like you guys and you guys on the screen here. And so I just want to make it uh, really consolidated. So you welcome kids in. You've got a three-minute countdown video that you're uh, going to play, and then the kids will be situated. They'll have their attention focused on the group time, and then you'll invite them to take a look at the poster that has the big idea in question with the verse uh, that we'll be discussing. So that's the jump start to the whole lesson. And then after doing that, you're able to show the Bible story on the video here. You just scroll on up to the Bible story, and that's a little bit longer story, and you have the option there. You can teach that yourself, or you can show the video. You can, in fact, show the video and then supplement teach uh, as well. You could add on a few things at the end of it. Um, and so that's a really good resource that you can use. And so when you're done with the Bible story, uh, then you've got an opportunity to sing songs, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, so you go through the songs, and you sing the songs that fit and match the unit and that week's lesson. So the songs tie into the... Uh, teaching time and then after the songs pray. is when you can have a time to pray and so you guys can pray together and usher in an opportunity to have that small group conversation where you have a small group lesson that is jump started by the discussion starter is that correct then you go to the discussion starter on the the dvd so we saw, saw that goofy video with the the uh, cupcakes eating each other, uh, or afraid they're going to be eating, excuse me. And, and so that's that's the opportunity for you guys then to do your smaller group lesson. And by small group, what we're talking about here is they can now talk, they can ask questions, and you can be there to help guide them. So if you're a leader out there and you say, you know what, I've wanted to 
What? There's a lot of activities. That you you talk around. while that you're doing the activities. Yeah, so you have questions, you talk, you do the activities together. It's a, a way to learn together. And so if you're a leader out there that's said, you know, I'd really like to help. I've been an assistant for a while. I'd like to lead, teach, but I'm afraid I don't know how to do all of that. Well, this really does it for you. You can step in and grow into your leadership, and you can have an assistant leader who maybe has taught before help you get there. Uh, and this provides a really good resource for you to do that as well. And you can also play to your strengths. If you're thinking, you know, I'm a really bad teacher, uh, I don't want to learn when I teach, you can show the video. But I'm really good at song and dance and music. You saw Alice's little <laughs> get jiggy with it moment, you like, I could get jiggy with it and get the kids jiggy with it. Then you could really blossom in that area and shine. And the kids really love you for what you're really good at. Maybe you're better at the small group type stuff where you're, you're the Martha. Uh, you're not the Mary just wanting to hang out. You want to take care of all the little details and make sure the kids are doing the projects and you've got it all prepped and ready to go. You can really shine in that area. So it's really got something for every type of leader that we have in our church, in our smaller church that's a growing church. And it also has opportunities for us to take our kids' ministry to a new level, a next level. Uh, this is something that we've wanted to do, especially in elementary and in children's ministry and the three, four, and fives, to give them songs and give them more interactive stuff uh, that they can participate in. You guys have done a phenomenal job. Every week, my kids come home talking about things that they've learned, and they get excited about church. And I talk to other families, and they say, you know, are we going to church on Sunday? And they make sure the parents get to church. And so I love hearing stories like that about how God's at work, and that's all in part to how God's using you in our church, but now we get to take it to an even new level, a level where uh, we might see more kids and growth and uh, kids grow spiritually and invite friends to want to be a part of that. So thank you for listening in. Uh, we left it up for questions, but we just have so many people with questions here. They're just ready to ask. Do you guys have any more questions? Because your question might help someone viewing it. Well, I think it's just clarifying that the preschool is a little bit different. You know, it's meant for the preschool or this is meant for the elementary same kind of format. There's a lot more activities when you read through the little booklet. You know, this is a copy of the first lesson from the booklet, but there's a lot more activities for the preschoolers than there are for the elementary because of like what mom said, they just require a lot more <laughs> activities. It does require some prep. I, I don't want people to think there's no prep, and I think there might be questions about, well, what materials does the church have, and what do you know we need to go get? Um, because not everybody's aware of what's in those big bins that are in the elementary room. Mm -hmm. Right. We do have a lot of resources, and because we're portable, they're consolidated, usually into one, in one bin. Uh, in the future, we will try and get areas that have their own, but for now, if you're missing a resource, I think it's really good to come ask me. Alice has been gracious enough to do the curriculum, get us going. I know many times Tasha has taught and Billy has run the check-in system. And so right now, what we really don't have is someone who knows everything about everything. We've got people who know a lot about different areas and you are probably sitting there and you know, I know a lot about uh, the, the intake sheets and when those come to us as a teacher and I got to make sure that their kids don't have peanut allergy or whatever or maybe you've got a specialized area and, and so for the time being uh, until God provides uh, someone who maybe can come alongside our church and do the scheduling and who can set the uh, you know, teachers up and do individual training and be there every single Sunday and help with the uh, supplies and all the just the intangibles that might get lost uh, you can go through me. I might have all of the answers for you uh, immediately, but I might not. But I promise you what I will do is go find out. I know who knows the answer, though. You might not know who knows the answer. So just because my wife um, is my wife or Alice is my mother-in-law, they're a part uh, of the children's ministry and, and my aunt, Aunt Billy, that doesn't mean that they know all the answers for everything. So you can help us, uh, especially if you've expressed and felt maybe some frustration with lack of supplies or anything like that, uh, just come through me and I'll try my best to help uh, get you there. So if you have a supply request, you can check with me and then I can check with some of the other teachers to make sure that we don't already have that so we don't purchase things. Uh, another tip that we'd love for you to do is wear name tags. And if you've lost or yours is falling off, uh, you know, just take a name tag that we have. We've got the little stick on ones. You can write your name and put it on there. It means a lot to a parent when they go, I know I gave my child to Nancy, or I gave my child to Megan, or I gave my child to... Now, this is, doesn't mean Megan, Megan, Nancy don't wear name tags. I don't know what to say. Those are names I remember. Uh, I gave my child to Jared. 
and uh, then they can go back and if that person is not there when they're looking for their child to say I gave my child to this person where did they go oh they took some kids to the restroom they'll be right back uh, it just gives a greater assurance there and uh, when we've got food you know involved in snack time and things like that uh, you know as a, as a teacher wait until Billy's processed those intake sheets especially if you have new kids coming in uh, I'm a parent of a child with a peanut allergy it's uh, mild but it's still scary uh, so we want to make sure that we don't uh, have any children that uh, walk away getting hurt or injured from eating something that they shouldn't and so uh, you can hold off until you get those sheets, even if it takes a few minutes. Um, but uh, thank you guys for listening. Is there anything else, like a quick little uh, thing that I could drop in there that I forgot, Pam? Do they take home something every week? Like, will they, they take, take home the, the activity sheet? page? Okay. The activity okay. page. And uh, the gospel card. Okay. With, okay. So those go home and they don't go back in the packet. The okay. journal is the only thing that stays in the packet, mm -hmm. but the activity sheet they get to take home, they get to pin it on their refrigerator, they get to talk about it at lunch, they get to reference it all week, and they've got that card, the Gospel Project card as well, that the parents can ask questions for. So we have to teach our parents about it. If you just give cards to the kids, uh, what I did as a kid was I put it in my pocket or I put it inside mm -hmm. of my sandwich bag. I mean, you know, things get lost. So we really want to train our parents on this, say, hey, this is a new thing. And so thankfully, Alice made that short letter and she can send that home with some of the parents of the elementary kids. And that'll give uh, families a little bit of training on that and so that they can say, yeah, great, I need to be doing this. And we come alongside families in discipling their children. Uh, it's our job to come alongside them. They might come 40 times in a year out of 52 weeks. That's 40 hours that we get. That's one work week we get with these children. And so we have a small but very significant impact on their spiritual growth. But the people who have a large and even more significant impact are the parents. So we can help train our parents by giving them those resources. Well, thank you guys for watching, and we really appreciate that. Thank you guys for being here. And we'll talk a little bit more afterwards if you have questions that you don't want to end up on video. I get it. You don't want to end up on America's Funniest Home Videos or, you know. I talked a lot. Yeah, way to go, Kelly. Thank you guys for watching.